Right, so let's look at the muscle to bone constraints. They differ from the muscle to muscle constraints in that they start on the surface points of the muscles and connect to the bone surfaces instead of starting on the internal tetrahedral points of the muscles. So if I go into wireframe view, I've just pressed W to toggle wireframe view, and um, you can see that it's actually attaching to the points on the surface directly instead of um, these ones inside the volume. Um, we can just go back to muscle to muscle to remind you of what that looked like instead. And they attach to the bone and they're allowed to slide on the surface of the bone. Let me toggle back the shaded using W again. Um, so yeah, this end on the muscles can't slide, but the end on the bones can slide. And uh, basically let's dive into the parameters. So as with everything else, we're gonna, on the first numbered tab, we are going to want to toggle everything on. Except, you guessed it, the attachment candidates for the same reasons as the muscle. We don't do it from muscle to muscle. So these are going to be much springier than the muscle ends because remember, like I said, the muscle ends are a million times stiffer than the muscle to muscle under the hood. But otherwise, these stiffness and damping values behave the same as they do for the muscle ends and muscle to muscle. The mask fall off, you'll see that with the um, you just do spacebar F with the uh, muscle to bone visualizer. We see this heat map, and that is corresponding to an attribute called the muscle to bone mask. And that attribute gets created inside this node, and it is based on the um, constraints created within this distance threshold. Um, but then the edges are blurred to give it a bit of a fall off. And then if you reduce the mask fall off value, sometimes need to reduce it quite a bit before it starts having an effect. Yeah, there you see it reduces the fall off range and the, the muscle to bone constraints get reduced correspondingly. Uh, you can't increase the mask, like pushing this value beyond one won't do anything. So that is what the mask fall off does. The distance threshold is for the radius um, within which the points on the muscles um, can look for nearby surfaces of the bones. The compression stiffness works much the same as mentioned in previous settings as does the rest length scale. The slide rate, as I said, it allows the muscles to slide, the constraints between the muscles and the bones to slide on the bone surface. And basically when it's zero, it doesn't allow any sliding. When it is one, the points on the bones, so the point on the end of the constraint on the bone side, is allowed to slide with the same velocity as the point of the constraint that is on the muscle side. So whatever velocity this point has, this point is allowed to move with the same velocity. However, if I set it to less than one, let's say I set it to 0.5, then the side of the constraint is only allowed to slide with half the velocity of the side of the constraint attached to the muscle. The side isn't sliding, this is how the muscle point is moving due to the simulation in general. Um, so I will leave that at zero for now. The tangent stiffness is uh, basically doing the same thing as in the muscle ends, only because it's affecting a larger area of the bone instead of just the muscle ends. It might possibly give some strange behavior because it's, I believe it is designed more to control for weird orientation or flipping issues on the ends of the muscles. So you might find that you get better results by reducing this tangent stiffness, um, but I'm not 100% sure. Then the velocity stiffness factor, this um, is going to basically allow for your 
muscle to bone constraint to become stiffer when the bones move faster. So how this works is if you have a non-zero value, your uh, bone velocity, which is in the units of meters per second, uh, which means that if you are working with a frame rate of 24 frames per second, which if I click here on the global animation options, that you see that is what my frames per second are set to by default, uh, which I also suggest if for whatever reason your incoming geometry has a different frame rate, you should remember to update this frame per second value correspondingly. But in any case, let's say I am using 24 frames per second, and over the course of 24 frames, in other words, one second, my bone is going to move two meters. So it's moving at two meters per second. That means that whatever my velocity stiffness factor is, so let's say it's 10, um, this is going to get multiplied with the velocity, which I said was two, so 20, and then that gets added to the stiffness. So the stiffness will become 30 when the bones are moving at a velocity of two. Then if you suddenly have the bones moving at a velocity of 20, the stiffness factor will multiply to become, what did I say? 20. So 200 plus 10, which is 210. So the faster the velocity, the higher the stiffness becomes based on this stiffness factor. If you're not sure what your velocity values are, and you want to be able to just do a rough estimate of what uh, effect these, what the actual value of these numbers will be, uh, you can on your animation, your bone animation, create a trail SOP with the result type set to compute velocity. Um, I set on evaluate within frame range and set central difference, creates a velocity attribute on the points. And let's just sort them a bit. Oh, let me go to a different frame where there's some motion. Here we have a velocity of 1.8, or well, at least one of the components of the velocity is 1.8. In any case, it's, this doesn't mean that the magnitude of the velocity is something like 20. It's more on the order of one or two. So let's, for the sake, say the velocity is 1.8, which means that the uh, wrong node, and I should also hit escape because I now try to cook it on the wrong node, on the wrong frame. Okay, so if the velocity is 1.8, multiplied by 10, add 10, we will get 28. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And the idea of that is to um, make the muscle to bone constraints stiffer when there is higher, when there is faster motion, and less stiff when there is more moderately paced motion. And finally, we have the attachment candidates parameter. So same as for muscle to muscle, we are not going to use the attachment candidates in our general settings initial tab because that doesn't make sense because it's all muscles are being specified. So let's do it for a specific muscle. So uh, I want to display my bone geometry and looking at these constraints, I am not happy with the constraints of this jawbone to these surrounding muscles. So let's say I'm going to select these two muscles, press A to create a new assignment tab, go to the muscle to bone tab, check on attachment candidates, and I am going to select this bone. However, you might see if you're following along, you're not getting the same result because I have the bone ID specified here. If I remove this, which is the default setting, then, um, then it's only trying to select a face when I go into selection mode. But if I set the bone ID attribute to the attribute that I've created that contains the name, in this case, bone ID, then um, the whole bone will get highlighted and selected when I, when I um, hover over it, click it, did that work? Yes, hit enter. 
And now I've specified it as an attachment candidate, which is the opposite of what I want. I actually want to specify it as the only one that I don't attach to. So I'm going to put an exclamation mark before the equal sign to say not equal to. And now we no longer have any muscle to bone constraints between this jaw and the neighboring muscles. Excellent. Now let's talk about this muscle to bone mask in a bit more detail. So I mentioned that you can control the value of the mask fall off, but it's still a little bit limited and it is, this value is initialized by the muscle constraint properties vellum node, but you can tweak it with a muscle paint node placed where? Yes, after the node. So let's go to muscle to bone mask. And let's just have a look again where I might want to tweak it. Uh, so let's say, for instance, I don't want this pec to be constrained to the bone in this region because I wanted to have more freedom of movement to move as the, the shoulder and arm move. Okay, and maybe I'll give it a bit of fall off too. So what this mask does is if, if the value is zero, then it won't allow um, the constraint to be created there at all. And if it's a non-zero value, that will be act as a multiplier on the strength. And I believe it's also logarithmic. When I say strength, I mean stiff, the strength of the stiffness. Um, so let's paint that. So I am going to toggle on connected only. I'm going to set this to zero because I'm going to paint it off here. And now I don't want that happening. I'll show a fix for that in a second. But let's say something like this. And then I will use shift. I'm holding down shift as I paint here to smooth that out so that this will become less stiff and make this a bit more zero, closer to zero. And now for this area that I accidentally painted over, I'm going to hold down control. As you see here, um, control and middle mouse button will erase. I'm going to do control and middle mouse button to erase what I accidentally painted over in this section. Okay, so now um, if I go back to the muscle constraint properties node, it obviously will not have any effect because the, what I've just painted is downstream of it. So now if I want to see the results, I'll have to look in a muscle solver and in the guides tab, I'm going to turn on muscle to bone. There we go. You can re click reset simulation if it doesn't update. Um, and now if I turn this off, You'll see there are more constraints and if I turn it on, then it removes those constraints in that region. All right. Now, um, I know I've gone on and on about not putting the muscle paint node upstream of the muscle properties or the muscle, or the muscle constraint properties nodes, but let me just show you another pitfall. Um, so let's say I didn't even paint the muscle to bone mask. I was just painting my muscle end mask. And maybe I did this before I watched this video and was aware of uh, the downfalls of doing the muscle paint in the wrong order. I haven't touched the muscle to muscle, uh, sorry, the muscle bone mask yet, but if I toggle off this mask fall off, parameter because perhaps I haven't watched this video yet and I know and I don't know to toggle it on on the first tab. Now I don't have any muscle to bone constraints. Now why is that? It's because the muscle paint is initializing all of these values to zero. So if these attributes don't exist yet, it, they get initialized to zero, which overrides this node initializing them to non-zero values that make sense, especially when the parameter is toggled off. 
if I toggle it on, this will ensure that it is initialized to a value that makes sense based on the distance threshold, and that will mitigate any problems. But again, these are all things that could cause confusion, could cause a lot of unhappiness. So that is why I am going on and on about how important it is to not have your muscle paint upstream of your muscle constraint properties or muscle properties nodes, and also to toggle on your parameters in your first uh, tab. Okay. So you can tweak it downstream and you can then see the results in your muscle solver node. Um, but I would like to point out something else on the muscle solver node. So you see under the simulation tab, under constraints, you have these two options, enable muscle to bone and enable muscle to muscle. So if I untoggle this, my muscle to bone constraints go away. And similarly, if I turn on my muscle to muscle to display them, then I untoggle that and they will go away too. So much like the muscle ends needing to be turned off here on the solver, the way to turn off muscle to muscle, or muscle to bone constraints is not by unchecking these. Like I said, that just initializes the values to something you have less control over. Instead, the way to turn it off is on the solver. And unlike turning off the muscle ends, it does actually make sense to, to turn off these, especially the muscle to bone, because often you can find that it's over constraining your muscles and stopping things from flexing happening. So in a typical workflow, I would suggest creating your muscle properties node, creating your muscle constraint properties node, toggling everything on, um, on the one tab, and then going to your muscle solver and, well, you'll probably want to create your muscle flex nodes and stuff too. But if you're not happy with the results, I would turn off the muscle to bone definitely and the muscle to muscle maybe. And the idea isn't that it's permanently turned off, but the idea is that you turn it off while you refine your muscle property values so that you can get a shape stiffness and a fiber strength that you're happy with. Because I've often seen people complain that they're not getting enough jiggle, um, no matter what their values are here. And it actually is that their muscle to bone constraints are too strong. So if you turn off your muscle to bone constraints, dial these values in, maybe to a point where it's a little bit more exaggerated than you would like, then turn them on, perhaps one by one, and then use that to refine these values. Trying to minimize everything so that it's not limiting secondary motion, jiggle, and so forth, so that it, it is just strong enough to stop muscles from gaping away from each other or muscles gaping away from bones. But you would probably always want your muscle ends active to drive the animation. Otherwise, you don't really get a good sense of how the animation is affecting um, the muscles and you're not going to get your flexing. So that is my suggestion for um, how to make use of these toggles to turn off the muscle to bone and muscle to muscle constraints. Right. In the next video, we will be looking at the last two tabs of the muscle constraint properties node.